Good evening, Hockey Town. As always, this is Hockey Town Hangout, the sickest podcast around. I'm Forrest, and I got Matt with us tonight. What's up? Got the duo back together. Back Dynamic. together. Dynamics, the word we're going with? Uh, some might call us that. Others might have some more choice words, but that's okay. I don't know. Well, we'll it, it takes a little bit of time to get goaded, but, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there. Sickest podcast around. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Hockey Town Hangout. Brings it in. Scores! Oh, his first NHL goal is a beauty! The sickest Detroit Red Wings podcast. It's gonna be sick. All right, so since the last podcast, uh, been two games, uh, First, well, first ones in North America, obviously against Columbus, um, squeak out a five-four win there, um, and then the uh, game today at two p.m. was in Sweden, so obviously we'll kind of talk a little bit about about both here. Um, going back to the weekend game with Columbus and Detroit, five-four uh, win, uh, they they squeak this one out. Uh, I will say, you know, we, we have definitely gotten on them for uh, slow starts a lot on this podcast, um, especially after, you know, the first five games, they've really kind of come out slow. So it, it was really nice to see them come out quick. Um, obviously, Columbus is uh, kind of a team in transition where they're at, the way they build exclusively through the draft, uh, firing a Mike Babcock at the beginning of the season, kind of kind of tough. I mean, I never heard of somebody – getting fired a week before the season. Obviously, we know about the stuff that happened with Babcock. Anyways, enough about the Blue Jackets. Um, first goal of the game, Lucas Raymond. How, how nasty was that? I mean, for, for him to go short side, I think we are really starting to see the ascension of Lucas Raymond. Um, finally seeing him mm, take the next step. Um, I know that he spent a lot of time in Sweden in the summer. They talked a lot about it on the, the broadcast um, and in the time leading up. So excited that he's he's starting to take this next step. I, I personally do feel like it. Um, any beginning thoughts on the first game against Columbus, Matt? Um, yeah, I. Um, it's funny. Ever since I like said something about Lucas Raymond, he's like completely stepped his game up, which, you know, I'll take that. L, that's fine with me as long as he's playing well. Um, but yeah. Not probably their best game, complete 60 minutes wise in Columbus, um, just considering it was a bit disorganized at times and allowed them to kind of stay in the game a little bit. But nonetheless, two points is two points in, in the NHL. And uh, like our like our friend Dan Campbell says, a win's a win, no matter how they come, just take them. Hmm. Um, so um, you got two points in Columbus. That's a team you should get two points against pretty much every time you play them. Um, and hey, they, they, they found a way to do it. So. Um, looking through it here on my, on my left, very up and down, uh, scoring two goals, giving up three goals, scoring three goals on their own, and then giving up the last one to end the game. Uh, very momentum based. Obviously, you know, we know how momentum based hockey is and how it can swing very quickly, but just it, interesting to me. Cause I think one of the things that we're seeing is defense is struggling to weather the storm. Hmm. Uh, it's it's getting tough. I'm just gonna say it's getting tough to see the ice time that people are getting, uh, and and just kind of kind of leave it at that. Um. Yeah. I'm just. I mean, it's mid November. We're exactly a week away from American Thanksgiving. There's just no. There's no way that Simon Edmondson could be doing any worse than any of these guys. There's just no fucking chance. I just refuse to believe it. And um. I just, I would be like, I just don't know. It's got to, that conversation has to have at least occurred. Like, it, there's just no chance it hasn't. And I just, um, I mean, I don't, you're going to have to wave somebody, I think. And I mean, take your friggin' pick, honestly. It's tough because I, I know that they are eyes been dealt for Petrie late in the offseason, too. You know, we, we already had six bona fide guys up front, and then he went and added Petrie on top. But, like, so 
personally, I think that was just like almost a favor trade because like we gave up Lindstrom and was it a third round pick or a fourth round pick? I think so. So, I mean, Lindstrom didn't have a future in the organization and like a third or fourth round pick at this point in the rebuild is expendable in like little tiny yeah. spurts. Um, I really, I genuinely believe that trade was like just a favor because like obviously he's from here. Um, I think his wife's from here too. I could be wrong, but like they have kids and like the family's here and everything like that. And I'm not exactly sure how much terms left on his deal, but I don't think it's long. Um, I think year. I think it's like another year after this, maybe two. Yeah. So it's not totally I don't know. Long. I just I don't think that Petrie was necessarily brought in to be like a core piece of getting towards the playoffs, which is like I don't know why he's playing so much if that's the case. Um, I just feel like at this point, Simon Edmondson. Um, I don't know his stat line in the AHL right now. Um, that could be a good thing to know. Um, but I've seen a few clips of some of the plays that he's making in the AHL. And he, like, I mean, the guy is playing solid hockey. He's at a point in his career where I feel like him coming to Detroit and playing on a second pair role is probably the most beneficial for him right now, especially considering like, okay, if he makes a mistake, there's room to grow. There's room to learn. But if like 36 year old Jeff Petrie makes a mistake, like well, who cares? And like, he's not going like, to, what is he going to do? You know what I mean? There's less incentive just based on the different situations. The two men are in, in my opinion. And I think that I think Simon Edmondson would get more out of being Detroit right now. And I think they could use the help and the energy and the youth. I totally agree with everything you're saying about Edmondson real quick um, for everybody out there. Uh, through 11 games in Grand Rapids, Edmondson has three goals, two assists, and is a minus four down there. I'm pretty sure that he's playing on the top power play unit, you know, top defense unit. And in that regard, he is getting, you know, 20 plus minutes a night, which can help for his development. You know, he hasn't been playing on the smaller ice for, for that long. So, you know, it's not the end of the world, but. Uh, my hope, my, my true hope is that they're they're using some of this as an audition to go out and, and trade one of their defensemen. Yeah, but it's I, just like, I mean, like, okay, so if you trade one of them, I mean, like. It doesn't really change much. But I, I just, I mean, mo most of, I'm pretty sure everybody on this core is at least locked up for next season. Everybody they brought in is at least two years. So realistically, we're looking at Edmondson being boxed out for dare I say this season and next, because that's, that's the way it's lined up right now. I mean, there's, you got seven guys in an NHL contract for next season. God, it's tough. I mean, yeah, there's gotta be some type of move coming at some point. I don't know if it's this year trade deadline or in the summer or what, but I mean, yeah, this is obviously a bit of a log jam has been created on their blue line. Um, I mean, Gostas bear will be a UFA, but he's obviously one of the guys I think a lot of us are, are happy with on the back end. So, um, and then obviously not to mention the fact that one more at cider is due for a contract extension any day now. It's, it's definitely a juggling act. You're hundred percent right. And I, I just don't know how they're going to do it, but I'm well, interested to see how it plays out. I mean, flip side though. I mean, these cap hits aren't unreasonable. Um, I mean, that's the, the thing that stinks the most, though, is yeah. Petrie is definitely the most expendable guy, but you could argue he's probably had the worst audition out of everybody so far. But if you're willing to ship him out for nothing, but of course, as I look at this here now, modified no trade clause, no move clause, because of course. Um, so, you know, just all those fancy clauses that make a GM's life more difficult than it needs to be. But um, something's got to give at some point because the way this is going um, I mean, we're still sitting in a playoff spot right now. This game against Toronto tomorrow is super huge in terms of where they sit in the standings after the game. Um, sure. Alex Lyons' first game in Red Wings uniform. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. But, I mean, hey, this veteran decor with Mo and Wally, I mean, I don't know. I think you got three guys in, in Wallman, Sider, and Gostas Bear, and, and Mata sometimes, and then just – Shira and Petrie and Hole, it's just a revolving door of what's going to happen next. <laughs> it's like playing Russian roulette. Yeah. You, you, just, you just don't know which dump in is going to be the one where they shoot themselves in the leg. And yeah. I mean, 
but we'll we'll obviously get to it. Or no, it yeah, it was it was the um, Senators game, you know, where Dabrinkit goes into the corner and throws the puck, and Sherrod literally watches the puck go through his skates to Brady Kachuk, who you know. Puts well, not there. to mention Jeff Petrie is just straight legged coasting through the slot while that pass is gliding across the ice at seven miles an hour. Like, buddy, put a little pep in your step. Act like you're 28 again. Come on. So something that I think is really interesting is against Columbus. Uh, can you guess who our top two uh, defensemen were in ice time? I'm going to assume Sherratt and Petrie. <laughs> you'd be you'd be 100% right. Yep. Uh, yeah. Just, both of them played over 22 minutes in that game. What the uh, hell? That's a problem. They, they they should be taking a seat on the pine the entire third period, and I, I'm just going to be honest at this point. Like, it, I don't know. I, I'm at a loss for words. So. Um, I mean, I really just think at a certain point you might have to wave one of them. Like, I just, like, I don't really know. Like, who's going to trade for a Ben Sherratt or a Jeff Petrie or Justin Hole with that term and what they've done so far? And, like, let's say, I mean, let's say they don't sell the deadline. They just stamp at whatever, try and push for the playoffs. Mess, fine. So then you have Sherratt and Hole with two years left at three-ish something million. What do you get if anybody even wants them? A sixth-round pick? And uh, you're probably going to have to eat maybe, like, 500 k like, I mean, just wave them. Just like, I mean, just at the end of the day, when the eyes are playing is complete and done and 10, 15 years, whenever it is, like, it's not all going to be perfect. So there's going to be some bad contracts. I mean, Jim Devlano and we all, we all know Ken Holland has had some bad contracts, but like it happens to everybody. So, and the fact of the matter is now that we live in this salary cap world and it's a hard cap and it hasn't been going up a lot lately. There's pressure from all of us. To, to be better and not be trash. And sometimes you sign a contract and it just doesn't really work out. And I'm afraid maybe that's happened once or twice on the Red Wings blue line here. I think with Sherrod, obviously around the league, for whatever reason, people view him as a quality defenseman, even though, you know, analytics and, you know, to be honest, he doesn't even pass the eye test personally. Um, so I, I don't see how people can consider him a useful defenseman, but regardless, uh, I think that the old school kind of mindset is where maybe Steve kind of, he went with his gut on it. He was like, you know, this guy's just, he's been an NHL defenseman, a staple, and maybe it fooled him. Cause you know, we, we don't, you know, we're, we often see him fleecing others, signing good contracts. I mean, the Larkin contract, good one to bring a contract. I mean, he, the guy is wheeling and dealing. So, but, but like when you look, but, when you look at it though, when you look at it in terms of Petrie, Sherratt and Hall, I mean, not great, okay, but like it only cost us cap space, Gus Lindstrom, and a mid round pick. So, like, it's not a ton of damage done in like grand scheme of things, unless you're watching the product and wanting to put your fist through your television. I mean, yeah, it's you, you mentioned those three, and I'm just like, yeah, I mean, if, if you're into just having warm bodies back there, and, <laughs> yeah, sh sure, you know, I mean, it works, but. No, I mean, to be honest, I, I think at this point, like, might, you might as well give Hull a chance, throw him out there, see what he – Oh, yeah, I'd play, I'd play him tomorrow for sure. If he doesn't yeah. play tomorrow, it's like, well, are you asleep at the wheel? Like, are you even trying? Like, you have to throw him in tomorrow for one of those two. I I would agree. Um, anything else on Columbus Wings? Um, uh, the, the the nice pass from Petrie to, to Brinkett. Uh, the little little one timer from the you know below the goal line to the the basically the hash yeah mark. that was pretty that was good that was good to see uh, Cat get back on the score sheet here and he scored again today as well. Uh, low key Daniel Sprong with another goal in that game. Um, he is quite. I'm pretty sure he's quietly one of the top five scorers on this team right now. Yeah, I like I like Spronger a lot. I, I'd give him a look on the second line at a certain point here. I don't know if he might might have already. I'm not sure, but. I would be down. I mean, to be honest, he – dare I say he has an outside shot at 50 points this year? Hey, man, someone's got two Rasmussen sure shit doesn't look like it. <laughs> well, and, yeah, I mean, with, with the way our defense is playing, it, it, it's kind of tough to have a goalie with, you know, any kind of semblance of a rhythm, we'll say. 
Yeah. Yeah. We should look. Let's talk about James Reimer. Let's do it. This game today. I mean, the first period and some change, they build up a four to nothing lead. <laughs> he looks like a friggin' pee wee goalie, and they, like his puck tracking is was just like he looks like a lost puppy. Like it's just frantic. It's all over the place. Doesn't know. He looks lost. And that like the Canadians game, like a week and a half ago or whatever, holds Cole Caulfield's stick. Like that's the dumbest friggin' penalty I've probably ever seen a goalie do. Like literally just hunched over like this, holding the stick, like not even like. A question of a doubt. And I'm honestly a little part of me was happy that Caulfield scored that OT goal. Like so, and then today, your team, despite your fuckery, battles back from a four rip deficit and gets to overtime, and you lose the game on a baseball bat swing that you saw coming and you friggin' ducked. That's on camera, man. That, it does not look good. And I got to tell you one thing. Playing goalie isn't easy. And one person in Detroit who knows all about that, God rest his soul, Terry Sawchuck, he would have dove at that head first without a friggin' mask on. So that guy should feel ashamed to see that clip whenever he watches it again. And that's just, that's embarrassing. That, I don't know what that was. But obviously it ends up in your net and you lose the extra point there against Ottawa. I think that's one of those plays where, you know, we're, we're all going to remember where we were. You know, the, the time a, a goalie very blatantly didn't do his job. You know, you, your whole, the whole goal is to stop pucks going in the net. If you are moving out of the way, that is the opposite of what you should be doing. Um, the, you know, I, I mentioned the, the, basically the Chell pass from earlier. Um, it, I think it was Batherson in the corner with the Brinket, you know, throwing it obviously through Sherrod's legs. Uh, right, right next to Reimer, it literally looked like a chell pass. You know, like one of those that you would just spike your controller on. You're like, how did that get through the defender's legs? You know, <laughs> and and but like th- that was what I thought of. You know, where the one you're like, how did the goalie not put his stick out? Come on, man! You're just like in real life, it wouldn't happen. It, it looked like James Reimer had the chell glitch, and I, I don't know any other way to describe it. I I just um, I'm very excited to see Alex Lyon play goalie for the Red Wings tomorrow. Um, I've been pretty underwhelmed with both Huso and Reimer in addition to the defense. Um, Obviously, Alex Lyon hasn't played a hockey game in a long time, Uh, and he's being asked to play his first game with a new team on a different friggin' continent than you normally play on in the National Hockey League. Um, So that's a tough adjustment. Um, But honestly, I'm rooting for the kid. I, I don't think any of us would be mad if he just stole the crease and didn't give it back. I think I'd be cool with that. I think at this time, we, we just got to see somebody else in that. I, I think that it would just help everybody. Um, uh, just seeing somebody else back there, you know, Huso, he's had, he's had his kid. Con- congratulations to him. I, I think that it, it, it could be a good reset. You know, the big yep. thing with him is we're like, we don't think we can trust him with 60 games. Okay. You know, we, we don't need him to, to do the 60. Let's keep him in the 45, 50 range. And this is one of those kind of resets in the middle of the year. Hey, take a couple games off, uh, you know, get Lyon his first start, 100%. If, if he can take off the same way he did in Florida last year and put a team on his back, not that the expectation is that we're going to go to the Stanley Cup finals or anything, but if he can come in and, you know, have a, a 9, 10 save percentage, I'm sure that we're all going to be over the moon. Um, yeah, I, I just truthfully don't want to see Reimer for a little bit. And I, honestly, I Alex, Alex Lyon just seems like a good dude. Every time like the social media admins put up like some of those like player interviews as they're like exiting the ice for practice, like yeah, Alex Lyon's energy in those videos is always off the charts. They had, they posted one the other day, like favorite food you'd eaten in Sweden. And he just comes off the ring smiling. He's like, Oh, I just had these things called Swedish fish. You should try them in America. And just everyone's just laughing behind the scene. Like, so I really like the kid's energy. I hope he plays well. And, you know, sometimes, you know, as a player, for sure, just a, a mix up in net, just something different to play in front of to maybe even give you a little more confidence is never a bad thing. It it, it just can't, it can't hurt. You know, the, but the first, with the first period, the last goal tonight, um, you know, the, the Caulfield thing last week, it, 
Yeah. Just give, give me some, give me something different. Retweet. All right. Uh, obviously five, four loss today um, in Sweden to the senators. Obviously, you know, we, we've called them the, uh, the barometer for us team. That's kind of in the same spot. Uh, the, the thing that I just look at today um, and what sticks out is, well, not, not even what sticks out today, but in the first matchup, Red Wings stars played awesome. The Brinkett had an awesome game, and they really took it to the Senators. Today, especially in that first period, they, they took it to us, and they took it to us hard. You know, that, that top line was all over the place. Kachuk, I mean, first two goals. <laughs> Come on now. Um, Sanderson, jo- Josh Norris, Michigan alum, uh, he, he's starting to turn up. I know that he was injured to start the year. He's, to be honest, that, that second line looks a lot better. And that's a lot, a lot of why I think that they're playing better overall. Um, but yeah, the, just the, the top guys doing all the work for the senators today. And I, I thought they really had their way. Um, I hate pointing out uh, officiating, but I thought that they were a little, we'll say forgiving towards the Ottawa side a little bit. Um, but you know, I'm sure there's a lot of Ottawa fans that would disagree with me. So go ahead, Matt. So did you watch the whole game? I I did not catch the whole game. No. Yeah. I didn't get to either because I was working, but I did get to watch, um, part of the second and the third period. I watched the first two goals in the first They, I mean, again, just starting on time continues to be an issue. And, um, I mean, it's a tough to go over to Sweden and play and everything, but Ottawa clearly started on time. So it's not like that should be an excuse. Um, but yeah, a uh, little scary moment in the third period. Larkin kind of went down awkwardly on a face-off draw. Um, that looked like it could have been like kind of like a knee thing at first. And I just was so thankful when I saw uh, our homegirl, Daniela Bruce tweet that she, he was back on the bench. So um, really, really dodged a bullet there because he's obviously a heart and soul type of player, but, I mean, at the very least, you get a point. You stay, you know, where you're at and at third place in, in the Atlantic. Um, I mean, just a massive tilt with Toronto tomorrow, obviously, because, you know, you're sitting at 19 points at third in the Atlantic, and they're sitting at 18 points in the first wild card. So, obviously, a swap in position could occur tomorrow if it doesn't go in our favor. And we have our measuring stick date of American Thanksgiving in one week. So, um, obviously, these next – two or three games for the Red Wings are going to be crucial. 100%. I, to be honest, after after the first period when we got blitzed, I was like, I am not going to waste my time on this today. And so I'll, I'll be honest with you. I changed the channel. Obviously, the boys proved me wrong today. So shout out to them for, you know, salvaging a point yeah. uh, after that first period because I'll be honest, I, I gave up hope. I was like, you know, hey, some days it's not your day, and it just didn't seem like it to me. And I will say, though, real quick, like, this team has shown the ability to, like, come back from some deficits, which is a really encouraging sign. They don't just roll over, which is probably what they did earlier in the rebuild, just because they, um, you know, maybe were a little bit younger. Um, Their veteran D, maybe their presence in the locker room is nice, even though their play on the ice is a bit, you know, catastrophic at times. Um, But their ability to not get too rattled and battle back is is quite frankly, impressed me quite a bit. I think, I think a big part of that is the veterans they brought in, you know, it, it's definitely a little, a little bit older of a team than we've seen over the last couple of seasons. And yeah, you, you are seeing that resiliency. And to be honest, I think that, you know, we don't really talk about Newsy on this show. You know, we don't talk about Derek Lalonde, but to be honest, I, I think that in year two, we're starting to see this team move in the right direction. You know, obviously we need to see more of the defensive side. Cause that's definitely where he hangs his hat. But I think we're starting to see some positives. Um, we mentioned Shane Goss earlier being a UFA after the season. One of the defensemen we like um, another three points today. Uh, another, I mean, he's also top five in scoring for the Red Wings. Um, you know, the only defenseman in the top five. So shout out, shout out Shane Goss I mean, what, what an addition to this team. Yeah, I'd give him a three-year contract extension tomorrow. Uh, to be honest, I mean, if you had to, if you have a number in mind, what, what do you what would you think? Like, he, I think he's what like three and a half right now. Um, would, you him, would you give him the Sherrod contract? You know, he's four point one two five right now. Okay, Sherrod's four point seven five. 
Yeah, I mean, I would give him the Schrock contract. At least he's going to, you know, generate some offense and play average defense. Yeah, no, it's that's real interesting. Um, Lucas Raymond, another goal today. It was real nice wrist shot, honestly. Real nice yep. wrist shot. Um, uh, quietly, I, I shouted out JT Comfort last week. Um, a quiet two assists today. I feel like I feel like he always gets on the score sheet every single night. I, yeah, I don't know he how just... he's he leads our team in ice time. You know, he's always taking great draws and another quick point. Uh, face offs. Mm-hmm. This team used to get pushed around in the face off dot. Um, a big reason why that they're not is because we have come for to, you know, take those right side draws and win the puck away from the center of the ice. And that is massive. And honestly, having him as our second line center and, you know, being able to have that second line that's such a shutdown line, it's an advantage. And it's, uh, it, truthfully, it's the reason why I think this team is taking the next step. Truthfully, it allows that that first line to, you know, go out and take advantage of lesser competition and truthfully, and you know, that's what you need. Got to have that. The the best teams in this league are able to put their third or fourth line against other teams' top lines, and they shut them down. That's what it takes. Yeah, I think JT Comfort has been a really nice addition. Uh, it's, you know, casual fan probably doesn't notice him too much, but he does a lot of really things nice. Wins a lot of face-offs. Um, just has a really good high, high, high IQ. Obviously, the ability to set up plays, getting, getting assists, um, on a fairly regular basis and decent scoring touch too when uh when necessary good in that front presence a couple nice tips um just one of those guys that just you know a lunchbox kind of guy just comes and goes to work his game is so complete i mean yeah just everything about it uh honestly you know i love the fact that michigan wolverine too so uh free jim harbaugh Yes, yes, free, free Jim Harbaugh. We can definitely agree on that. I did see um, Kevin Weeks tweeted today. They're talking about potentially a Wings Jackets game at the Shoe in Columbus, doing a UMish OSU game there as well. I think that's in the works. I think the NHL took a trip there sometime and then not too far past. So that mm. could be something exciting to keep an eye on. Very cool. Very cool. They they say when it would be or just, no, just like speculation. I mean, probably 25, 26, if I had to guess, somewhere in there. Well, that's cool. I mean, you know, any, any, way, any way we can grow the game, I, I, th- I think it's good. Yeah, pretty shitty venue, but, you know, we'll be cool to play outdoors. Definitely. I mean, I was at the Big Chill in the Big House in 2014, and, you know, while it was insanely cold, you talk about one of the most unique and coolest sporting events I've ever been to. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go. I got to go to the Winter Classic in 2014, uh, Wings and Leafs. I, I left, I rookie mistake. After the first period, I had to go to the bathroom and I leave to go to the bathroom. I didn't get back to my seats until there were probably like seven minutes left in the second period. Um, so rookie mistake there. Cool, cool spectacle to go witness, but I would never, ever go to another hockey game at the big house again. Oh my god, there's way too many people. It was snowing. Oh, it was it was honestly a little bit miserable, I'm not gonna lie. Uh Yes, it 100% was. Uh, very fortunate that I come from a family that does hunting. So, honestly, I was bundled up and I didn't have any issues. But I, I saw at least 10 to 15 people there getting, you know, ambulanced out because they were frozen, frostbite, whatever. It was so cool. I mean, honestly, I, I'll never forget seeing the snow just come down all throughout the entire game. Um, and Datsuk at the end with the chance to with the break or what was it is a penalty shot chance to take the lead obviously they lost but such a cool event never one that i'm sure we'll, we'll never forget yeah one once in a lifetime thing i'm, I'm all set i'll watch the rest uh, at home with a with a nice uh i don't know maybe maybe a spiked ginger ale or two you never know spiked ginger ale wow. yeah it's the holidays baby it's the holiday season so um, what ahead. do you what do you have to say to the Red Wings decor to get them motivated to play better tomorrow against the Toronto Maple Leafs? Ah oh, goodness. Putting you on the spot, coach. I, I would say that I would say it whoever plays the worst is, is going to be sent down. I, to be honest, I, I would just say that. Like at, at this point, I, so, I hate to say that somebody has got to be the fall guy, but like, 
insanity is insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Uh, we have a, a top prospect down there. I just I just think it can't hurt to even just bring him up for the nine. Just bring him up for the nine. Check him out. I, I just think anything different. Mix, you know, in the same way that we're talking about bringing a new goalie, I just think something different on the defense might be a good thing. Because I, to be honest, if I, if I'm a forward and I got some of these guys back there, I, I should be hustling my ass back in the zone every time because you, you don't know when something's going to go right through somebody's legs or they're just going to lose what looks like a 60-40 puck when they're, they're going back to their end. I mean, cause to be honest, sometimes it looks like a 60, 40 puck in our favor. And then, Oh, Shrott, you know, does his usual Jonathan Erickson impression in the corner and coughs it up right to their team. But I, I dude, I see so much Jonathan Erickson and Ben Sherrod. It's not even funny. Dude, <laughs> it's I, like it so not funny even funny. He pressed the goal horn the other night because my goodness, I was like, are, are we sure he's not dressing up? It would have been funny if he went to press and just and missed and fell down. <laughs> Have we ever seen Ben Sherratt and Jonathan Erickson in the same room before? Uh-oh. Shit. We might have just cracked the code. He tried to get back in the league. He tried to play us. Fucking A. That's hilarious. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned they're, they're playing Toronto um, tomorrow in Sweden. Massive game. Um, uh, honestly, I think – I. I guess I would rephrase what you asked me earlier. Instead of being so critical, obviously that that's not the way to coach people. I would say just the next three games are a tryout. That you know, best person's going to start sitting in the press box, and we're not going to play seven defensemen. I, I just think you can't continue to reward people for subpar performances. Simply put. Fair enough. Who do they, who are the next two after Toronto? So it's it. It, it's a tough slate of all fantastic teams, Toronto, New Jersey, and Boston. Awesome. Yeah. Say, so, hey, we, we got the gauntlet the next three games. Th- this is the tryout. Um, and then somebody's going to go take a seat in the press box. Hell yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's that's a tough three-game stretch. So what can you do you have the dates in front of you by chance? Absolutely. So uh, tomorrow, the 17th, is Toronto. Uh, Wednesday, the 22nd, day before Thanksgiving, is New Jersey. That's at home. And then it is Friday, Black Friday, the 24th, at Boston. Okay, so pretty much where they're at af- after that Boston game should be kind of the first, like, real very serious evaluation of the team for sure. Definitely. As we all know, that that Thanksgiving time frame is really the first first barometer of, hey, you know, the, this is what we got this season. This, this is where we got to patch our holes and kind of go forwards from there. Um, but last thing today. Say Red Wings decide to become buyers this year. What's one hole you're plugging? Oh, shoot. Uh, my turn to put you on the spot. Um, I mean, the, the D of some variety. I mean, I would love if we could find like a legitimate, like solid partner for Shane Gostas Bear, and then you could bump back Oli Mata to the third pair to play with one of those damage control guys. I would, I would try and find a second pair right shot defenseman or left shot because Gostas Bear doesn't give a shit. Just a, a second pair guy to go with Ghost. And then you have a solid top four. Oli Mata, number five, solid number five, and mm-hmm. let Larry Moe and Curly figure it out for number six. I fucking love that. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> the three stages back there. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. All right, everybody. Appreciate y'all joining. As always, this is Hockey Town Hangout, the sickest podcast. Have a great evening. Fuck Toronto. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Hockey Town Hangout on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.